Alright, what's up everybody? Back with another edition of Everyday Hoops. Yes, we are back. Hope you guys have a good one. Uh, today we're recapping the first day of the Sweet 16. Some amazing games yesterday. It was great to watch. And we're going to recap them really quick for you here. Uh, by the way, if you do like the content around here, you know, consider subscribing. Like, turn on notifications, all the stuff like that. I put up shorts every day one or two a day so go watch those we got March Madness content NBA content especially with the season ending also next month April um, I got a new series coming out as well for the NBA and I'm very excited to go into that one uh, but yeah let's not waste any more of your time let's get right into it the first game we had was Michigan State Kansas State in Madison Square Garden and what an amazing game this was our start this game for Kansas State, Keontae Johnson and um David Kassan. Doing well, Keontae Johnson. No getting down low. David Kassan hitting shots. Um, Kansas State got off to an early lead. The Michigan State, of course, came back. Jay Nakins was great in the first half of this game. He had a lot of shots to bring back. Joey Hauser as well. Uh, Tyson Walker then got in it halfway through the first half. Uh, but Barkeys Noel was really just dominating in the first half, finding everybody. He has such great vision. You know, it feels like he can make any pass in the world that he wants to. You know? Uh, yeah, at the end of the first half, he got high finding people, hitting threes. Uh, Kansas State goes into halftime with a 43-38 lead after a Cam Carter three-pointer. Marquis Noel has 10 assists in the first half. Go to the second half. Uh, Kansas State scores the first few buckets, takes an eight-point lead, but then, you know, can't, um, Michigan State comes right back. Jay Nakin saying three. A.J. Hoggard was big in this game as well, getting to the rim, getting layups. Uh, Middle call it back to back layups to tie the game at 50. And then it goes back and forth from there. Marquis Noel also got, gets injured in the second half. Uh, no, was it was at the end of the first half. No, it was the second half. Um, man, he, you know, kind of twisted his own ankle. He looked really bad. He sat out for a few plays um, in the game. But then he comes back in and, you know, keeps it going. Michigan State did take a little bit of lead when Noel went out. Uh, Tyson Walker. It is some shots. A.J. Hoggard getting to the rim. Malik Hall getting to the free throw line. Um, but, yeah, then Kansas State takes a seven-point lead right back. You know, Marquis Noel, David Gassan was, who, was huge. Ish Masood um, hit a deep three-pointer as well late in this game. Um, yeah, late in this game is really close. You know, Jay Nagy's hit a three-pointer, make it a three, two-point game. Then Marquis Noel hit a setback jumper. Then Malik Hall comes down. Makes it and one. Doesn't make the free throw, though. The only thing about Kansas State, Kansas State was taking some very bad shots, I feel like, at the end of the game. You know? Like, Keontae Johnson went up with a weird mid-range jumper that got stripped and stolen. And then Marquise Noel took a really, really deep three-pointer. Um, trying to waste clock, I understand, but he also he took a really deep, like, almost half-court three-pointer. And they were up two. When I thought they should have just done a pick-and-roll. That's when the, what was working all game, but for some reason they didn't do it. Uh, but then Michigan State comes down the other end, and Tyson Walker gets to the rim, makes a tough finish. It's out of the game. The Marquis Noel comes down, pushes the pace, gets a layup, but just couldn't get it to go. Just a little bit more power. He could have got it to go, but he didn't get it to go. And we go to overtime, the first overtime game of the tournament. Yeah, 82-82. Um, goes overtime. A.J. Hogger gets to the free throw line. He's getting to the rim. Tyson Walker hits a big three-pointer as well. And David Gassan hitting layups. Uh, it was an amazing play. Probably the most viral play yesterday. Marquis Noel pretends to fight with Jerome Tang. I don't know if he pretended or he actually was calling his own number and and Tang was calling a play. But then Marquis Noel just throws it up and Keontae Johnson was just sitting in the corner. And I think A.J. Hoggard just didn't know what was going on. Keontae Johnson goes up. He gets a reverse dunk. Um, an amazing play. You know, Marquis Noel always thinking ahead. You know, Keontae Johnson. Um... You got Anthony Johnson, really athletic. And then the other end, David Gasson blocked A.J. Hogger trying to get to the rim. Malik Hall gets fouled with 42 seconds left, makes the first, misses the second. Uh, we come down, Marcus Noel takes another pretty bad shot, a deep three-pointer, but it gets tipped by A.J. Hogger, so we can't stick the ball. And then the inbound, Marcus Noel makes a bounce pass to Ish Masood in the corner and hits a jumper to make it a three-point game. Last possession, Spartans have it. Ball's moving around. Tyson Walker tries to go for the ball. Marquise Noel, because who else? Taps it, steals the ball, comes down, lays it in, even though the layup didn't matter. 
but with Marquis Small makes a defending play, and Kansas State wins 98-93 in an amazing game. Uh, Kansas State shoots 56% for the field. Uh, Michigan State actually had a really good three-point shooting game. Shot 13-3, shot 52% from three uh, with the turnovers. Kansas State forced 13 Michigan State turnovers. They had eight more assists and 10 steals in this game. Keontae Johnson finished with 22-6 and six on 10 for 18 shooting. Marquise Noel, 20 points and 19 assists, the most in an NCAA tournament game ever. He also had five steals, shot 7 for 18. He's been a star. He's probably been the star of the tournament so far. If you had to ask who I think the star of the tournament was, it's Marquise Noel. I mean, he's just, he's done everything for Kansas State. He's finding everybody, making insane passes, also going out and getting his own, making some good big plays on defense. He's just been absolute, ama- absolutely amazing in this tournament. Uh, Ish Masood put up 15, hit four threes off the bench. Cam Carter had 12, and then Tomlin and Gasson each had 11 points. Uh, yeah, for Michigan State, A.J. Hoggard had 25 six assists, shot 7 for 14 from the field, hit 10 free throws. Joey Hauser had 18 and four threes. Tyson Walker had 16. Jay Dakes had 14, and then Millie Call had 13 off the bench. Yeah, Michigan State's played a really tough game. It was just the turnovers, man. Michigan State was turning the ball over a lot, and Kansas State was capitalizing on them. But that's what it was, and then now Kansas State's going to the lead eight, man. What an amazing game, and they're really tough team, you know? Uh, the next game we had was Arkansas and UConn. Um, can I get got off to a really... It was actually a really, like, back-and-forth start, you know? Arkansas never actually had the lead, but they were only down one early. Anthony Black, we can really aggressive getting to the rim uh, for UConn. Um, Adama Sunogo, uh Andre Jackson was bringing a lot of energy. And then all of a sudden, UConn just slowly started getting away, getting away. The bench came in uh, for UConn. Well, this is the bench for Tristan Newton was playing big. Donovan McLean came in. A couple down Joey Calcaterra. And it's the threes. And all of a sudden, the lead was up to 34-17. UConn halfway through the first half. Uh, Arkansas tried to make it a comeback. Nick Smith, Devon D. Davis, Ricky Council tried to make it a comeback. But UConn was just hidden, man. Uh, Alex Caravan. Um, Jordan Hawkins gets to the free throw line. UConn leads 46-29 at halftime. We go to the second half. And it just, you know, it doesn't get any better for Arkansas. <laughs> UConn, Jordan Hawkins starts to get on fire from three. Yeah, the three-star hitting. And no one could guard. No one on their team could guard Adamus Sonogo. UConn wins 88-65. to uh, They shoot 57% from the field, hit nine threes. Um, they had 22 assists to Arkansas 7. They had 39 rebounds to Arkansas 25. And they were just too big. Honestly, down low for them. And then also, the three-point shots started hitting. You know, and their defense was stifling, really. Their defense was really stopping, trying to stop all the guards Arkansas had from getting to the rim. And they did a really good job at it. Uh, Jordan Hawkins finished with 24 points, shot 6 for 13, hit three three-pointers. And Dalvin Sinogo, 18-8, and two blocks. Uh, Caravan, 11-7, and seven, and then Alain, Alain had 10 points off the bench. While Andre Jackson had 7-8, seven, 7-3 seven, steals, and Tristan Newton had 6-6-7. Six, six, uh, UConn's a really tough team. They're big. They got the big men. They got the wings that do a little bit of everything. They got really good shooting. Uh, they have a solid bench. Like, UConn is a very tough team to beat, man. It's going to be a very tough team, especially if they're playing defense like that. Tough team. Uh, Anthony Black for Arkansas finished with 20 points and 5 steals. Ricky Council at 17, and then Nick Smith at 11. Uh, Devontae Davis, who was the, the reason why they beat Kansas last game, shot 1 for 10 from the field. Um, yeah, Arkansas just didn't have enough size, really. They were trying to force it, really, at the end. Get into the paint and trying to run a transition, but UConn, uh, wasn't having it. And now they're going on to the Elite Eight. Uh, the next game we had was Florida Atlantic, Tennessee. Um, this game started off, uh, Tennessee started off this game very well. You know, they're hitting their threes, getting to the rim, uh, playing some really stifling defense. They got out to a 17 8 lead. And this game led by you know, Josiah um, Jordan James. Um, FAU Oakland. Okay, Still made it close. You know, uh, Brian Greenlee, uh, Michael Forrest, trying to make it close. But Tennessee was just playing really, really good um, early in the game. And Tennessee took the 27-22 lead. Very low scoring first half, of course. Tennessee's a insane defense. Uh, we go to the second half. And FAU is keeping it in there. You know, John L. Davis and shots. They start to hit threes. Nick Boyd. Brian Greenlee, they start to hit their threes. And Tennessee's starting to miss some shots. Uh, after an eight-point lead for Tennessee, 
uh, FAU comes back. John L. Davis, Michael Force was huge. Michael Force, their backup guard, scored eight straight points to give tennis FAU a four point lead. Um, and then Elijah Martin hit a big three pointer to make it a seven point lead. And then they led by 10 with 6.50 left in the second half. They start the second half off amazing, hitting threes, playing some amazing defense on Tennessee as well, forced them to take some pretty, you know, contested three-point shots. Now, Tennessee did make it a game, though. Olivier uh, Nakuma, I, I keep forgetting how to say his name. It's very tough to say his, that name. Yeah, him, Josiah Jordan James, trying to bring this team back. But at the end, yeah, Tennessee just couldn't make their threes. And FAU was converting on their free throws. And FAU takes the game 62-55. to 55. FAU shoots 42% from the field, hits 8 threes. Tennessee shoots just 33% from the field, 26% from the three, and 58% from the free throw line. Um, Tennessee actually did their thing. They, they forced turnovers. Tennessee forced 12 FAU turnovers. But FAU just shot a lot better from the field. John L. Davis at 15-6, and six, shot 3-for-9 from the field, hit 9 free throws. Nick Boyd at 12-8, and eight, and then Michael Forrest had 11 off the bench. Uh, just a huge... Second half from FAU. You know, they start to lock in, get their shots. FAU is actually a really good team, man. FAU really is. You know, it doesn't matter. I don't care. A lot of people will say, no, 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 don't them because they're a small school, you know, and they're a nine seed. But FAU is legit, like a really good team. They're going to be a problem, you know, in the tournament. Now they're going to go play Kansas State. I think that's going to be an insane game. Uh, Yeah, for Tennessee, there's Isaiah Jordan James and Adu had 10 points, but yeah. Just a tough shooting night. You know, Vescovy shot 3 for 11. Uh, Olivier, 2 for 9. Plastic, 4 for 10. Tyrese Key was 2 for 9. Just a very tough shooting night for Tennessee. And now they're going home. Um, their defense couldn't save them in this game. And then the final game we had, Gonzaga-UCLA. What an amazing game this was. Uh, UCLA got off to a really good start. Um, Amari Bailey was playing really good. Tiger Campbell as well uh but Gonzaga you know Drew Timmy it was Drew, the Drew Timmy show he was doing everything for Gonzaga early in this game but then he got tired couldn't make shots and then UCLA went on their run hitting threes Jaime Yaquez got in at Tiger Campbell was doing their thing um especially the end of the first half Jaime Yaquez got hot Mari Bailey got hot UCLA went to halftime with a 46-33 lead playing really well on both ends we go to the second half and Gonzaga starts doing it Drew Timmy and then uh, Julian Strother starts to follow him. Um, and then Malachi Smith was huge in this game. Off the bench as well, hitting a ton, ton of shots. Um, and UCLA just looked tired out there. You know, UCLA's doubled with a lot of injuries. They have two starters that are out with injuries. So it has heavy minutes for all their starters. And they just looked tired and couldn't make any anything. And, um, yeah, you see, um, Gonzaga just kept putting it on him. Drew Timmy, Julian Strother, Malachi Smith... Um, and they take they took a lead. Gonzaga took a 61-59 lead after a Malachi Smith jumper with eight minutes left in the second half. And UCLA just went cold, man. UCLA did make a, their last their field goal after Jaime Aquez hit a layup with 12:34 left in the second half. They did not make a field goal for the next like 10 minutes or 11 minutes. UCLA went 11 minutes without making a shot. They made free throws, but. Without making like a, a regular shot, they didn't. They went eleven minutes. That's insane. <laughs> they just went cold, man. They just could not hit any. They couldn't throw a rocket to a pine. And you and Gonzaga took advantage of it. Drew Timmy, Malachi Smith, Julian Strother was huge. And you, you, um, Gonzaga led by ten points with two minutes and forty seconds left after Malachi Smith three pointer. Uh, they led by, and then Jaime Yaquez finally hits a shot with a minute fourteen left to make it a, make it a seven point game. Come down the other end. Actually, it was I and one for Jaime Aquez. Come down the other end. Julian Strother gets fouled. He hits both free throws. The eight point game with a minute left. We come down UCLA. David Stingleton gets fouled. He hits two free throws. And then Malachi Smith turns the ball over on the inbound on a bad pass. He's trapped to the corner. It didn't use a timeout. Instead, he tried to make a crazy play. And the other Gonzaga player was like, What are you doing? He throws out of bounds. Even you could say oh, there's a picture, there's a thing of Mark View. After that, he was like, call timeout. We have three timeouts. Call time. Yeah, he should have called timeout. Bad play there. And that leads to a Jaime Aquez bucket and one. to take it a three-point game. Come down the other end. Anton Watson uh, gets fouled. He may misses the first, makes the second. It's a four-point game. UCLA comes down. Jaime Aquez hits another layup. Uh, Drew Timmy then gets fouled. Drew Timmy misses two free throws with 25 seconds left. UCLA gets the board. 
comes in. Tiger Campbell drives, finds Amari Bailey for three, and he hits it. And UCLA takes a one-point lead. After being down 10 points with two minutes left, they take a one-point lead with 13 seconds left. UCLA calls timeout, and I thought, oh, my God. Gonzaga's going to do it again. Gonzaga's going to blow the game. And then Gonzaga comes down. Um, I forgot who it was. He was coming up the ball. He's behind him. Julian Strasser from the from the logo, from like the end of the logo, pulls up and drains a three-pointer. And I was like, that is the most confident I've seen with a game winner with a big shot like that in college. Like he literally came down and pulled up. Like I know I'm hitting this shot. Like I don't even know if that was, honestly, I don't even know if that was the play for Gonzaga to shoot that shot. But the shooter Julian Strother, like not even the ball was coming to him. He said, he, you could see in his eyes, he knew I'm taking the shot and I'm making the shot. And he made the shot. And UCLA comes down, and Tiger Campbell tries to make a pass, but Gonzaga steals it. Um, Julian Strother gets fouled, misses the first, makes the second. It's a three-point game with one second left, and UCLA actually gets a good shot off. They mount a, um, their big man, he throws it to Campbell. Campbell gets a, actually a good three-point shot off. He just can't get it to go, and Gonzaga wins a wild one, 79-76. That's probably the game of the tournament so far right there. Uh, Gonzaga shoots 50% from the field. UCLA shot 42% from the field. Um, Gonzaga's free throw shooting really let UCLA back in this game. Gonzaga shot 9 for 17 from the free throw line. Uh, UCLA actually forced a lot of turnovers. They forced 14 Gonzaga turnovers, but Gonzaga out-rebounded him 48 to 24 and had 16 offensive rebounds. Uh, Drew Timmy had an amazing game, 36 and 13. Shot 16 for 24. Had two blocks. He was amazing. Just dominated in the paint. Julian Strother, 16 and 10, including him the big one. And then Malachi Smith had 14 off the bench. Big uh, production for Gonzaga. UCLA, Jaime Aquez at 29-11, three, three steals, shot 12 for 25. He was great in this game. Amari Bailey had 19, and then Tiger Campbell at 14 and nine assists. But yeah, you said just didn't have enough depth, really, at the, at the end of it. And yeah, they just went really cold because their starters are playing so many heavy minutes. But yeah, what a game. And Gonzaga, that was a big win for them. Now they're moving on. Uh, yeah, so it's now today we got the rest of the 316 games. We have SDSU, Alabama, Miami, Houston, Princeton, Creighton, Xavier, Texas. For the next side of the bracket, and yeah, only some only only gonna get better. It's only gonna get better. Last night was one of the best nights of Smart Madness so far, and it's only gonna get better, man. So yeah, that's it for today's video. Hope you guys enjoyed. Once again, if you do like the content around here, you know, consider subscribing, like, turn on notifications, do all the stuff like that. I really appreciate it. Got some a lot of content coming for you every day, and um, yeah, I will see you guys tomorrow.